We are just days away from the Federal Reserve's June meeting. There's been talk from Fed presidents about a possible pause in rate hikes, but nothing is guaranteed until Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Joining us right now is Rick Mishkin. He's a former Federal Reserve governor who is now a professor at Columbia University and a CNBC contributor. And, Rick, you're not a fan of this idea of pausing. Yeah, I, I actually think that I can understand why you might want to do it. It's not terrible if they do do it. Uh, but I think that we're in a situation where inflation numbers are still high, are very slow to come down uh, towards uh, the 2% target, particularly in the underlying inflation, which is a, a number that is much more uh, reliable in telling us about what future path inflation will be. Uh, the economy and labor market is still quite strong. There is some weakening, but we've got a long way to go before we contain inflationary professors, uh, uh, pressures. And therefore, uh, I think that the Fed is going to have to raise rates and better off doing it now to show their strong commitment to keeping inflation under control. Particularly important because they did blow, blow it uh, earlier on when they were too slow to start raising rates, but luckily uh, got them the stick and really started raising rates quickly. You don't sound super concerned, though. If they pause this time around and then raise in July because the next meeting's just the next month, that, that would be something that wouldn't be catastrophic, in your opinion? No, I, I don't think it's catastrophic. I think the key is the communication here, which is the Fed's got to communicate, uh, number one, that they, uh, they think that, that the bias is certainly that they have to keep raising rates, uh, that uh, they have not got inflation under control the way they want to. Uh, they still have some, uh, some work to do, uh, and uh, that's something that, that uh, they have to commit to. Uh, the second issue is that it's even maybe even more important, is that the markets have continually talked about the Fed uh, easing uh, when the economy starts to slow. And I think the Fed has to be very clear that until inflation really is heading down to the path of 2%, uh, that, uh, and it's really clear that, it, that that is happening, that they're not going to pivot, they're not going to reverse course, that it's going to take a sustained period of high interest rates to get inflation under control. Uh, and that's a lesson that, that uh, uh, they, sh they should have learned from the past. There have been periods, for example, even during the Volcker disinflation, when Volcker actually blinked uh, and uh, cut rates to, uh, uh, before their job was really done and they had to raise them even more. So I know people don't like rates to be higher. I sometimes get some nasty emails about this uh, when I advocate that rates have to be higher. But if we don't do it now, then they'll have to be even higher in the future. And that's the lesson that we've learned in the past. And I think the Fed understands that, uh, but has to communicate that well as well. Rick, we've heard that message from Neil Kashkari and others. But for some reason, the market really doesn't believe it. If you look at interest rates and uh, where people are anticipating things, is that just... I mean, how, how do they correct it? How do they say it more firmly? How do they make people believe them? Well, eventually uh, it happens. I mean, look, the markets continually thought that the Fed wasn't going to raise rates as much as they were raising rates. Uh, and uh, the Fed just can't, can't have to keep on doing it. That's part of the credibility issue. And that's one of the reasons why I would prefer right now that the Fed actually raise rates, uh, just because it would provide the signal to the markets of, wake up, guys. Uh, we haven't yet uh, finished our business here. Uh, and uh, it's it, and we're not going to stop uh, keeping rates high until we actually have success in getting inflation down on the path towards two percent in a reasonable period of time. So, so that's part of the education process. The Fed has to keep at it. It's not unusual that the Fed and markets disagree, uh, but you know you don't fight the Fed when the Fed basically uh, keeps doing its job and lets people know. Eventually, the markets will come around. We've heard people recently estimate that it could take rates up to as high as 6%. We heard that from the former uh, Richmond Fed, Fed president earlier this week when we spoke with him. Jamie Dimon has said similar things. What, what's your estimation just in terms of where you think rates need to come, how high, and what that means in turn for the unemployment rate? Yeah, so my view is that that's one of the reasons, again, why I like the idea of raising rates now. Uh, the quicker you, uh, you move, the less high you have to go. Uh, and that was part of the, the mistake that they that made of being too easy for too long, which I was very critical of for quite a period of time before they started raising rates rapidly. So uh, uh, we don't know exactly how high rates have to go. Uh, if the banking sector actually is in good shape uh, and uh, that's not going to be a big drag on the economy, then I think we're going to go have to go to at least five and a half. And in fact, it's not out of the realm of, realm of possibility that we might have to go to six. I actually hope not. I hope that uh, the Fed's credibility gets, gets the markets gets it, uh, that people get that the Fed's going to be serious, so the Fed doesn't have to raise rates by as much. But you know, this is a tough game. You basically have to to. It's tough both because you don't know exactly what you need to do, and also communicating is not so easy. 
But so, that's an know, interesting. Uh, that's an interesting point, though. What you're just what you're saying is that if you don't do this quickly, you're going to have to go higher, and it will eventually cause more pain. You're basically saying you got to be cruel to be kind here. Yes, it's, a, it's tough, what I call tough love. Look, you know, you know, you know I don't know. Not everybody has kids, but I have kids. Uh, but you know, a lot of times, you got to basically say, uh, you know, tough noogies. That's an old phrase, by the way. But uh, you know, you say tough. You, you know, uh, if you're going to grow up to be a decent kid, you, you, you basically got to say no to you right now. Uh, and that's sort of the role that the Fed has to has to play uh, in an important way. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 that if the Fed had operated much, uh, acted much quicker. And was not as slow uh, to, to get to finally stop uh, removing their accommodating policy. We wouldn't have to be in the position we are now with the high rates that we have now. That's unfortunate, but at least the Fed got its act together. By the way, when the Fed doesn't get its act together, that's when you get to the period like you to get the '70s and then the '80s, where you know the interest rates were 20 percent under Volcker. So, uh, so uh, we're in a lot better shape than that. But uh, this is the cost that gets paid if you basically are not tough enough. And just as it, with kids, if you're not tough enough when you're raising them, they're going to be, grow up to be rotten kids. They're going to be much, much worse off than if you gave them tough love earlier on. It's the same deal.